Sweets are bad for you. Don't eat anything after 6 p.m. Be afraid. Be very afraid of fat. Get those carbs out of my face. How many food police do you have inside yelling at you? Today's video is all about getting rid of those pesky little food police that tells you what you can and can't do with food. Hey, I'm Elizabeth and on this channel, I help women just like you become women of wellness by making peace with food, loving your body, and finding joy in exercising women. Click the subscribe button below to commit yourself to becoming a woman of wellness today. I'd love to have you join me. And also to help you guide through these intuitive eating principles, grab the guide and checklist that I created just for you. It's linked below. Now let's talk about those annoying voices in your head that dictate every single choice that you make with food. But before I move on, I wanna tell you something important about food. Food is gray. And now I bet you're wondering what on earth that means. Food is gray, food isn't gray, it's colorful. For our purposes today, you must understand that food is a gray concept. In fact, let me guess that for many years you have probably looked at food as black and white. Okay, before I confuse you even more, let me explain myself. You see, so often we look at food and eating as a black or white issue. You're either eating the wrong foods or you're eating the right foods. You're either following the rules perfectly or you're breaking them and left and right. You look at certain foods as good for you while other foods are bad for you. We have a black and white vision of what food is for us in our lives. We're either on our diets or we're off our diets. And that's why today's lesson is all about challenging the food police. These pesky little food police are our thoughts about food that tell us what rules we should follow. And that's exactly what police are. They're rule monitors. If we're breaking the rules by eating cookies, then that makes us bad, in trouble or a failure. If we're sticking to the rules and following our diet perfectly, we're doing good. It's as simple as that, right? But really, I don't know about you, but that is not how I want to live my life. So today, might I suggest that you start looking at food in a gray area, not black and white. Food is not good or bad, it just is. It doesn't make you a bad person if you lack self-discipline around food. You're learning and there will be many moments where the gray space is a great opportunity to learn, to silence those food police and remind yourself that you are on a journey. So now understand, now that you understand what this gray area of food and nutrition is, let's talk about how to get rid of those food police that you probably have daily. There are two steps to getting rid of the food police. There are first to change your self-talk and second to focus on what we call process thinking and don't worry, I'll explain both. So first, change your self-talk. How often during, during the day do you find yourself using the words must, should, supposed to, have to, can't when you describe food and your relationship with it? Do you tell yourself you should eat this or you shouldn't eat that? Or do you rationalize with yourself that if you follow the rules by eating a salad for lunch, you can go out for a burger and fries for dinner, right? This is a perfect example of the food police working inside you. So when you're faced with these kinds of scenarios, which truly could be multiple times a day, start learning to replace those irrational thoughts with rational thoughts. Ask yourself, is what I'm thinking a rational thought? Is what I'm thinking true or false? And then replace those negative, irrational thoughts with positive, rational ones. So let's go through a typical scenario to help you understand this concept better. Let's say you walk into a friend's house and she's making cookies. The smell of cookies fills the house and it's absolutely amazing. But you've been on a diet for a couple weeks now and you've been doing so well, you can't blow it now. A few thoughts and beliefs fill your head. I've been so good on my diet lately. I haven't had any sweets. And I'd love one of those cookies, but I shouldn't have one because I know that if I do, I probably won't be able to stop and I'll totally blow my diet. So after a while, you decide to eat a cookie and the irrational thoughts come back again. Oh no, I shouldn't have done that. That wasn't smart. I have no willpower. I'm out of control. I'll never be able to lose weight. Ugh. You're filled with this sense of disappointment, failure, fear of feeling out of control, lacking willpower. So what are your next steps? You eat another cookie and another until you've eaten way too many cookies to contemplate feeling like you've even, you're even following your diet. You've blown it, you feel guilty, you've got frustration. You feel like a failure. 
What if we could change this scenario to look a little something like this? Same situation, but this time you remind yourself that you gave up dieting and you have permission to eat whatever you want. You eat a cookie and you enjoy it fully. You're happy and satisfied and filled with no guilt whatsoever. Maybe you're content to leave one cookie and leave the rest alone, or maybe you decide today you want two, and that's okay. But once you've eaten one or two of the cookies, you're done. You feel just fine and you enjoy the rest of the afternoon with your friend without worrying about the cookies. It was the irrational thoughts that started that spiral downward to the feelings of guilt and failure. But when you took a step back, and reminded yourself about the rational things that you gave up dieting and you're allowed to eat whatever you want, you realize that enjoying a cookie or two in a day is completely okay and nothing to worry about because you know that you can enjoy it without experiencing guilt afterward. So next time you're faced with these kinds of irrational thoughts and feelings, just take a minute to stop and change your self-talk. You might be surprised at how different your view of food will become. Okay. Now that you've changed your self-talk, the second step to getting rid of the food police is to focus on process thinking. What is that you say, right? Well, when you think of a diet, it's very much of a linear process. You're on a straight line and only on a straight line from the beginning. There is no room for error. There's only one goal. Follow the plan perfectly and weight loss will occur. It's as simple as that. But unfortunately, life isn't very linear. It has bumps, roadblocks, sharp turns, and stop signs. When you think in a linear fast fashion, you only think about the outcome, the end goal or the result. Process thinking focuses on continual change and learning rather than the end result. It's about learning to ride those bumps, those roadblocks, those sharp turns and stop signs while still moving right along. Becoming a process thinker will help you recreate your relationship with food in a happy way. So let's take a look at how a process thinker works. Man, I struggled with this, this week a bit with food, but you know what? I learned some new things that will help me make changes in the future. And I'm totally happy with that. Or how about this one? I'm not stressing about my weight loss because I'm reminded that I'm learning to honor the positive changes I'm making with my relationship with food. Or lastly, I, desert, I ate more dessert tonight than I was hoping for. But I'm learning that giving myself permission to eat keeps me from binging later because of the feelings of being deprived. If I wouldn't have eaten the dessert at the restaurant, I probably may have gone home and gone crazier later. I'm proud and happy with what I accomplished tonight and I will continue to work on it every single day. With process thinking, you focus on the positives of the journey. This doesn't mean that you won't have hard times and do things that you wish you didn't, normal for all of us, but instead each mistake you make is another learning opportunity. So if you know me, you know that I have some simple homework for you. I want you to take the next week to start listening to the food police in your head. What are they saying? Then pick one way to change your thoughts one at a time. It could be as simple as reminding yourself to think about food in the gray, or when you're ready, Try to create a simple conversation with yourself about changing the irrational thought into a rational one. Or remind yourself that you're becoming a process thinker and that you're on a journey with ups and downs. And that's totally normal. Start changing your thoughts about food and watch your relationship with food change every single day. Are you going to do it? Remember to grab your intuitive eating guide below for even more practice and I will see you in the next video.